Greetings. Welcome to the online gathering for Samanach Baptist Church for Sunday, June 12th, 2022. This is a Sunday in the Christian calendar where we focus on the essential doctrine of the Trinity. Last week being Pentecost, the Trinity guiding us, the Spirit guiding us into the truth that God is one essence and three persons fully possess that divine essence, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining us for this online gathering. My name is David Johnson. I serve as the pastor here at Samanak Baptist. We would love to welcome you to one of our in-person gatherings. We gather every Sunday at 10 a.m. Please, if you're local and you do not have a local church, we would love to welcome you to our online gathering. This online gathering is gonna be called to worship in a few moments by a reading from Psalm 103. One announcement before we do that, midday Bible study happens this week. We're walking together in a conversational way through Paul's letter to the Galatians. We meet at 1 p.m. here at SBC in our fellowship hall. Psalm 103 verses one to 14 calls us to worship with these words. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget none of his benefits, who pardons all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with loving kindness and compassion who satisfies your years with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. The Lord performs righteous deeds and judgments for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the sons of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in loving kindness. He will not always strive with us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his loving kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. Just as a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he himself knows our frame. He is mindful that we are but dust. This is God's word. Let us pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we bless you. All that is within us, blesses you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one who pardons our iniquities, the one who redeems us, the one who satisfies us. We ask you by the Spirit to perform righteous deeds on our behalf, to bring justice to all who are oppressed. We confess that you are compassionate and gracious. We confess that you are slow to anger, but quick to show loving kindness. We thank you that you have not dealt with us according to our sins, that you have not rewarded us according to our iniquities. We thank you that in Jesus, you have removed our transgressions from us. By your Holy Spirit, have compassion on your children. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servant's grace. By the confession of a true faith, to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity. And in the power of your divine majesty, to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading from the Gospels this morning comes from John chapter 16, verses 12 through 15. This is the uh, towards the conclusion of what they call Jesus' 
upper room discourse, Jesus and the disciples near the end of his life, just the day before Good Friday, gathered together in an upper room. And John 13 through 16 records what he teaches. And then John 17 records this high priestly prayer for his disciples and for us. And we have here this small paragraph in the middle of John 16, beginning in verse 12, that says, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them in at the present time. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me for he will take from mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the father has are mine. This is why I said he takes from mine and will disclose it to you. This is the gospel of King Jesus. It's now our privilege to pray. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, by the gift of your Spirit, you are near to us. May your nearness cause us to rejoice in the Lord always. May your nearness cause us not to worry about anything, but in everything with thanksgiving to let our requests be made known to God. Holy and near God, we bring our prayers to you because we love you and we want to love you more because we love our neighbors and we need to love our neighbors more. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayer. You give us bread to strengthen our hearts. So we pray for ourselves and those we love. In obedience to your Son, Jesus, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your love knows no partiality. We pray for our community and for our neighbors. King Jesus, we thank you for our neighborhood. King Jesus, we thank you that you love our neighborhood and that you desire unity for our community. We believe that you have placed us strategically within Samanak to bear witness to a unity that transcends all the divisions of this world. So by your spirit, enable us to be the church in and for and with Samanak, Sandwich, and the surrounding communities. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. You fill your people with the love of Christ, so we pray for the church in all places that we may be one. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. You are the Lord of all you have made. We pray for the world that your reign may come and your will be done on earth. Father, for the continued suffering that happens in Ukraine, Father, for the grief and the brokenness connected to so many mass shootings, Father, for those for whom a complicated and difficult economy is hitting close to home, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Because by the gift of the Spirit you are near, we offer you the burdens that our hearts are carrying.
We cast these burdens upon you because you care for us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. God of grace and glory, you fling the stars into the heavens, you see every sparrow fall. Deepen our trust in the mystery of your power, shining through Christ Jesus, that we may live your love for the world. In the name of the one who taught us, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The title of my message this morning is called, What Can We Now Bear? We're thinking specifically about the Trinity and specifically about what Jesus has to teach about the Trinity, but but more specifically, how the gift of the Spirit prepares us to be able to bear all that Jesus does for us and all that Jesus wants us to know. So I want us to dig deep in our gospel reading this morning, but I want us to dig deep into John 16, 12 to 15 with our reading from the epistles in view. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to dig real deep into a few words here in John chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. But then what I want us to see is how the realities that that gospel text gives to us to carry, equips us to carry, are really gloried in and experienced in in these first five verses in Romans chapter 5. So our epistle reading is going to be Romans 5, verses 1 to 5. But that is going to come at the conclusion of our deep dive together into John chapter 16, verses 12 to 15. Before we unpack this text together, allow me to pray. The grass withers. The flowers fall. But the word of our God remains forever. So now may the words of my mouth, may the words of all our mouths and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight for you are our rock, you are our redeemer. And all of us said together, amen. On our refrigerator, we have a laminated chore chart. In a less than 1500 square foot home, filled with seven image-bearing human beings, mom, dad, that's me, and five children ranging from ages 20 to 10, we have found it quite essential to intentionally distribute various household responsibilities. Now, adjacent to the laminated chore chart on the refrigerator are magnets. And these magnets, the best way I can describe them to you is they are half marbles. The first two letters of each of our children's names is embedded within the clear glass of the half marble. And as you can probably figure out that for our kids, the space on the chart occupied by their marble indicates what task they are responsible to complete. Here's a chore on the chore chart. Fill Daisy's food and water bowls. If the JU magnet is fixed to that chore. Junia, who's 13, is responsible for making sure that our lazy black pug, Daisy, has sufficient water and food. Here's another chore, fold clothes. If the AL magnet is fixed to that chore, Alethea, who's 18, is responsible for folding laundered clothes. For the most part, the chores on the chart fall within the ability of all of our kids. However, we have learned that some of our kids, depending upon their age and other factors, 
are more equipped to bear certain responsibilities than others. For example, asking our 10 year old son to clean the entire kitchen after a Saturday morning breakfast is probably a responsibility he is not best equipped to bear. The same is true of other tasks around the house. Last week, Eulinda wanted to transplant a medium-sized lilac bush. The first child she asked for help was Silas, our 15-year-old son who's taken to weightlifting each evening in his home. Not because our 13, 18, or 20-year-old daughters were unwilling to help, they just aren't as equipped to bear what she was asking. When it's time to clear the gutters, or put a spare tire on a car that's parked on a slight incline, or buried the squirrel that couldn't survive falling into the rain barrel. As a parent, I pause. I pause to consider what each of my children is able to bear before requesting their help. Whether it's answering certain questions, giving permission to see a movie or allowing certain forms of technology or social media. Wise parents are always considering this question. What is my child able to bear? This is precisely what we find Jesus doing with his disciples in our gospel this morning. Permit me a few basic observations about this small paragraph. First, notice that Jesus regards this situation as temporary. Verse 12, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them at the present time. But, and then he describes when they are going to be able to bear the things he has for them. Jesus regards this situation of his disciples being unable to bear certain things he wants to say as a temporary situation. It's not as if Jesus considers these these common disciples and says, I've had it with you knuckleheads. You're never going to get it. It's not what Jesus says at all. Again, he says, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them at the present time. Furthermore, Jesus promises that a time is coming when he will hold back no longer, where he will say everything that he has to say to his people. Indeed, he says, when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide us into all truth. Here, Jesus is again making a promise that has occupied most of his upper room message. Again, these are Jesus' last words, John 13 to John 17, that he shares with us before he begins the process of becoming heaven and earth's true king. This this consolidated event of Jesus returning to the Father's right hand goes by way of death, resurrection, ascension, exaltation, and gift of the Spirit. But this promise that has occupied so much of what he has to say is this, an advocate, another advocate, Jesus says, will follow him. The Holy Spirit will be Jesus' successor. And by virtue of his death, resurrection, and exaltation to the right hand of the Father, he, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, will be poured out from heaven on earth. At that time, when it's no longer the present time, but the future time, when Jesus can say all that he wants to say, what will be the task of the Holy Spirit? Jesus tells us, we don't have to guess. The Holy Spirit will be the person through whom Jesus speaks to his church. Look at verses 13 to 15. But when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. All the truth there is not every single thing that could ever be known about anything, it's all that Jesus wants to say to us. For he will not speak on his own, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. And then more specifically, to do these things, he will glorify Jesus. 
For he will take, Jesus says, from mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has, Jesus says, are mine. This is why I said that he takes from mine and will disclose it to you. The Holy Spirit won't have his own word for the church. The Spirit will not speak on his own, but whatever he hears, he will speak. What is it the Holy Spirit hears and then discloses to us? He will make much of Jesus, Jesus promises. He will glorify Jesus, for he will take from what belongs to Jesus and then will then disclose it to us. Even more profound, the Holy Spirit will take that which the Father and the Son share within themselves and will disclose it to us. Church, Jesus has a lot to say about what he will have to say to the church through the Holy Spirit. What is all the truth from verse 13? Into which the Holy Spirit is promised to guide us First, the Holy Spirit will remind us of Jesus' words earlier in the Upper Room Discourse. John 14, verse 26, Jesus says, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and will remind you of all that I said to you. The Holy Spirit's ministry is this ministry of reminding, reminding us of the teachings of Jesus. Just like Jesus did not speak on his own. Numerous times in John's gospel, Jesus does not speak on his own. Chapter 5, verse 19. Chapter 7, verses 17 to 18. 12, verse 49 and 14, 10. Jesus speaks only what he hears from the Father. So the Holy Spirit, similarly, see there's this unity to the Trinity. So the Holy Spirit doesn't have his own solitary word to speak to Jesus' church. Instead, the Holy Spirit points us to what Jesus has to say. Beloved, do you want to be filled with the Spirit? Do you want to know what being filled with the Spirit looks like? Do you want a Spirit-filled church? In that Spirit-filled church, what the Spirit, when the Spirit has its way, will do is point the church to Jesus. Jesus also promises that the Holy Spirit will take with that which the Father and the Son interdependently share and disclose it to us. Now, I think a couple of phrases in this reading are, are worth digging deeper into. First, Jesus explains, I have many things to say to you but you cannot bear them, my translation says, at the present time. The word translated bear is bastadzo. You got to be careful when you say that because Facebook might shut you down. Bastadzo. A wooden translation of this phrase would be, but you cannot carry at the present time. Eugene Peterson's The Message offers this paraphrase. I still have many things to tell you, but you can't handle them now. This verb, bastadzo, is really an ordinary verb. In Matthew 3, verse 11, John the baptizer confesses, I am not worthy to carry, bastadzo, his sandals. In our gospel, John 12, verse 6, Judas is described in this way. He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal, bastadzo, what was put into it. The idea of, of holding close in kind of a private, intimate way. Later in John's gospel, Jesus asks Mary, his dear friend and disciple, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Mary, supposing him to be the gardener, said to him, sir, if you have carried him away, bastadzo, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. From these uses of this verb, we can discern that Jesus is saying to the disciples in John 16, there's something necessary that must take place before his disciples are ready for what he has to say. 
before they can bear, before they can carry, before they can hold Jesus' words close, even privately, there's a transformative gift they must receive. Just like our 15-year-old son has an ability to help his mother transplant a medium-sized lilac bush, his younger brother doesn't yet have that ability. There's growth and strengthening that needs to take place. Jesus is saying here, I don't need you to work out in order to be able to bear and carry these words. No, there's something God is going to do for us in order for us to be able to hold appropriately those things Jesus has to say to us. For us to be able to do that, there's something God must do. Something God the Spirit, and this is the second word I want us to unpack, must disclose to us. Did you hear that repeated word? Look at verses 13 to 15. But when he, the Spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will disclose to you what is to come. He will glorify me, for he will take from mine and will disclose it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. This is why I said that he takes from mine and will disclose it to you. Anangelo. Anangelo is the word translated disclose. As a verb, its basic meaning is to announce or report. Does that word anangelo sound familiar? Anangelo is what angels do. The two words are connected, angel and anangelo. Angels announce, angels report, angels herald good news. So here's what this means. In order for us to hold appropriately, in order for us to be able to receive and not reject Jesus' word, we need something powerfully announced to us, reported to us in such a way that we are transformed. Now, before we land this plane, we need to remember one important truth about the way John tells the story of Jesus. The atoning work of Jesus, according to John, is not just his death. The atoning work of Jesus is his incarnation, his words and work. The atoning work of Jesus is his betrayal. The atoning work of Jesus, yes, is his death, but it's also his resurrection, his exaltation, and for our purposes, his sharing of the Spirit. So the coming of the Spirit is part of the Christ event that includes all of these things we've just mentioned and, and more. Think of it this way. All of what Jesus does is all of what we need to be made one with God. Let me say that again. All of what Jesus does is all of what we need to be made one with God. In Jesus' death, resurrection, exaltation, and sharing of the Spirit, the great disclosure of God is happening. An unveiling, an announcement, a report, a disclosure through the Christ event, the inner life and essence of God is being disclosed. And in the words of Jesus in verse 12, that means we are entering and have entered into the time we will be able to bear the many more things Jesus has to say to us. We read the story of the disciples and we think how wonderful it would be to have been a disciple. In John's thinking, it's actually better to be in our time because we are the people who have had the transformative disclosure of God, the announcement, the report of all that God is in Jesus and all that God has done for us in Jesus. So what is necessary to be able to bear Jesus' command to Simon Peter? In chapter 18, verse 11, Jesus says to Peter, put the sword into the sheath, the cup which the Father has given me, am I not to drink it? 
what is necessary for us to be able to bear Jesus prohibiting us from resorting to violence in his name? What is necessary for us to be able to bear Jesus' willingness to be shamefully beaten by Roman officers instead of striking them back? What is necessary for us to bear Jesus' words to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would be fighting so that I would not be handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom, Jesus says, is not of this realm. What does it take for us to bear the truth that Jesus discloses to us that he doesn't want us fighting in his name? What is necessary for us to bear seeing and hearing Jesus create a new family at the foot of the cross from his mother Mary and her new son, John? What is necessary for us to heed Jesus' invitation to have breakfast with him to his disciples even when they are afraid and without faith? Beloved, all of what Jesus does is all of what we need to be made one with God. In his death, resurrection, exaltation, and sharing of the Spirit, the great disclosure of God is happening, and we are now those who can bear, who have been equipped by God to bear all that Jesus has for us. Beloved, so often I doubt whether or not God's people can bear all that Jesus requires of them. And that is a lack of faith on my part. We are no longer in the present time when we are unable to bear all that God has for us. The climax of the great disclosure of God is the sending of the spirit of truth. Hear the good news. You don't have to make yourself able to bear all that Jesus wants to share with you. God will take care of that. God, the Holy Spirit, the love of God in person, promises to make us able to carry all that Jesus has for us. Did you hear that? God, the Holy Spirit, the love of God in person. That name for the Holy Spirit comes directly from St. Paul which leads me now for us to hear our epistle reading, which sounds an awful lot like what John has to say to us. Romans chapter five, verses one to five. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ through whom we also have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand, and we celebrate in hope of the glory of God. And not only this, but we also celebrate in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance proven character, and proven character hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. This is God's word. Let us pray. King Jesus, help us to believe that we are now able to bear by the great disclosure of God, which climaxes in the love of God in person being poured out upon us in our fear and even in our lack of faith. Help me as a proclaimer of your scriptures to believe that you have now made us able to carry close all that Jesus has for us. Come, Holy Spirit. Be for us. Help us to experience as your people who you are, the love of God in person. Through Christ our Lord, amen. 
And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.